Happy Thursday, September 12th, 2024. I hope everybody has had a great week, and let's get this show on the road. Uh, before we start with our celebrity birthdays, um, I just want to talk for a minute. Yesterday was a very somber day, of course, in the United States of America. Everybody remembers 9-11-2001. Uh, we will never forget that day. I'll never forget the call I got from my mom uh, waking me up in the morning. And tell me to turn on the TV. I uh, was watching just like, what's going on? And she's like, I don't know. They're not sure what's going on. And something happened. A plane crashed into a building in New York. They're not sure if the plane just went off course. They don't know what's going on. I woke up my ex-girlfriend who was staying at my place at the time. And we got up and we watched. And just as we were watching, the second plane hit the building. The second building. Um... It was it was horrific to see that live on TV, um, and the cameras did not pan out. They just watched, uh, and it was a scary sight knowing that that was not just a plane crashing into a building. That was something else, and in the days following, we found out that it was a terror attack from within our own soil, um, people coming from abroad and learning how to fly our own planes and take them into the building themselves. A um, lot of lives were lost that day. A lot of people perished, um, whether it was in the buildings, uh, heart attacks on the ground from seeing it. Um, people who, firemen who went in the building to save people and the building collapsed. The Pentagon, uh, the airplane that went down in Pennsylvania. It was a horrific day altogether. But you know what? We watched America crumble, but then rebuild itself. Um, that night when people were there helping, there's still people to this day who are getting cancer from, um, from being there in the rubble and all this stuff. And there's people still dying to this day from it, from cancers, firemen and Red Cross people that were helping at the time, 23 years later. And I still will remember it like it was just it happened like yesterday. Um, so let's do a moment of silence for everybody who lost their lives that day. We'll do this. We, we do this every year for those people, for those families, for those people that were young and vibrant and just working at a new job. Maybe some of it was their first day at the job. America goes through a lot on a yearly basis, but I think that was the thing that nobody will ever forget. As long as we live, as long as you're here, you will remember. As long as you're here, your kids will know what it was. And maybe one day they'll pass it on to their kids and say, I wasn't there for it, but your grandfather was. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's do a moment of silence really quick um, for the people who we lost on 9-11. All right, we got a jam-packed show. Let's get it going. If today is your birthday, happy birthday to you. Uh, and if you, it's your birthday, here's a celebrity sharing a birthday today, September 12th. Uh, Sydney Sweeney turns 27. Paul Walker would have had a birthday today. He's one of my favorite actors. Uh, Kelsey Ballerini turns 31. Actress and singer Jennifer Hudson is 43. And Two Chains turns 47. Uh, tomorrow, September 13th, Friday, uh, Playboy Cardi turns 28. Uh, singer Niall Horn is 31. 
uh, actor and creator Tyler, Tyler Perry is 55, Fiona Apple turns 47, and Boy and Girl Meets World actor Ben Savage turns 44. Uh, Amy Winehouse Saturday has a birthday, uh, Nas turns 51, Emma Kenny turns 25, Bulls, former Bulls player and now current Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler, turns 35. And the beautiful actress from Father of the Bride, who's married to Brad Paisley, Kimberly Williams Paisley, turns 53. Last but not least, if Sunday is your birthday, here's the Sunday birthdays. Prince Harry turns 40. Tom Hardy turns 47. Lisa Vanderpump turns 64. Actor Tommy Lee Jones, 78, and former Miami Dolphin quarterback Dan Marino turns 63. Also, the man that I had no clue was behind this game, but if you loved Marco Polo as a kid, Sunday would have been his birthday if he were alive. All right, so let's move on now to some football, and we've got a lot to talk about. I went 12-4 and four last week which was amazing. 12-4 and four is pretty decent. I only guessed four wrong. And the Bears were not one of them. I guess they were going to win, and they did. Uh, 75%, not too bad, not too shabby for my first week. Let's go over week two. Well, let's go over week one. I'll let everybody know, for those who don't know who won all the games, we'll go over that really quick right now. So let's go into my ESPN app, and we will look at all the games last week to see how the first week of the NFL season went. All right, so week one, of course, kicked off on Thursday night football with the Kansas City Chiefs beating the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the next day, on Friday, yes, there was a Friday game. It was the Green Bay Packers and Philadelphia Eagles Live from Brazil. That ground was horrible. The Eagles ended up winning 34-29. to um, That ground was awful. And Jordan Love, with five seconds left, ended up getting hurt. And he will be out uh, for at least three to six weeks. So their backup is going to be playing, which he didn't look that great in that game. Now, he only came in with five seconds left. But he was trying to drive downfield and just didn't have anything in him. Uh, Sunday games, it was the Pittsburgh Steelers beating the Atlanta Falcons 18-10. to Justin Fields had a pretty decent game. He threw about 184 yards. He ran uh, and got some running yards, and he also uh, rushed in for, was it one touchdown? No, they had no touchdowns. So he had no touchdowns, no interceptions, um, and it was all field goals they won. That was crazy. Uh, and then, let's see, we had the Buffalo Bills beating the Arizona Cardinals 34-28. to Chicago Bears, we talked about them on my Monday show, which will be every week now. So I won't do much Bears talk um, during this show as I do on that show. So if you really want to hear some in-depth Bears analysis from me, check out my new show on Mondays. And that will be available on the same place as you're listening, Spreaker. You know what? Let me check if it's... Oh, I can't because if I do it, it'll mess up this recording. I'm going to check because it could be on i. It's probably on iHeartRadio too. Probably under the exact same section that this one's under. Because it's all under one umbrella. So we'll see. But yeah. Make sure you check out my new show. It's really good. I talk about the Bears game that's playing. Now today, I'll talk a little bit about the Texans game coming up. But let's go into this. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. The Texans, who the Bears play on Sunday Night Football this week, went 1-0. and They beat the Indianapolis Colts 29-27. to It was the Miami Dolphins winning 20-17 to over the Jags. Uh, we had the Bengals uh, losing to the New England Patriots 16-10. to Carolina Panthers, still not good. Lost 47-10 to to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, the New York Giants lost to the Minnesota Vikings 28-6. to It was the Seattle Seahawks over the Denver Broncos 26-20. Uh, the Chargers uh, went 1-0 and won the first matchup for Jim Harbaugh as a head coach. 22-10 over the Las Vegas Raiders. It was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 37-20 over the Washington Commanders. The Cowboys 
won their first game 33 to 17 over the Brownies. It was the LA Rams losing to the Detroit Lions on Sunday Night Football 26 to 20. And then of course Monday Night Football, Mr. Aaron Rodgers, his first game back after the Achilles took him out last season. Uh, he ended up losing that game in perfect playoff form. Aaron Rodgers loses again to the San Francisco 49ers, 32-19. to That's right. So that was last week. A lot of good games. Um, hope everybody got to enjoy it. Now, here we go with week two. And here's my prediction. So last week, 12-4, 75%. Not bad. Um, now, next week when I tell you, I'm going to tell you what my percentage is for the entire two weeks. So every week now I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what I did the current week, what I'm at for the season, and then of course my percentage for the season. Uh, so let's do this. So I've got the Buffalo Bills tonight taking out the Miami Dolphins. Uh, that's going to be a good game. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, Sunday at noon, I've got them beating the New Orleans Saints. I think, like I said, Dak Prescott is good in the season. Looking like a Mississippi pimp now that he signed that big extension with the Cowboys. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Detroit Lions, I have beaten the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're going to go 2-0. Of course, right now I got Green Bay losing. I don't feel like their backup can do this. I don't think he's going to have a good season um, while, or a good time while uh, Jordan Love is out. So, yeah, I think they lose to the Colts. Colts get their first win. Uh, the Jets and the Tennessee Titans, I got the Jets getting their first win. I think Tennessee proved last week how bad they were. Um, I think Will Levis is a terrible quarterback. I mean, he should have won that game. And we'll talk about that in a second, too. Uh, so the New York Jets, uh, I think, are going to get the win there. San Francisco 49ers and the Minnesota Vikings, I got San Francisco winning that one. Seattle Seahawks, I've got over the New England Patriots. I'm going to take the Washington Commanders over the New York Giants just because the Giants are that bad. Uh, I got the Chargers, of course, whooping on the Panthers. I'm looking at this. 98% of people pick the Chargers. Only 2% are picking the Carolina Panthers. That 2% are probably Panther fans that think they're going to win every game. Uh, let's see. I've got the Browns over the Jaguars. I've got the Baltimore Ra uh, Ravens beating the Raiders. I've got the Los Angeles Rams getting their first win over the Arizona Cardinals. I got the Pittsburgh Steelers beating Denver. Justin Fields will be starting in week two again. Um, I've got the Kansas City Chiefs beating the Cincinnati Bengals. And then Sunday Night Football. Here's the funny thing. If you go back to the show, it was two weeks ago, not last week, but the week before that. I did my picks for the Bears. What games I thought they were going to win what games I thought they were going to lose. I'm going to come back to this after I talk about the Monday night game because I've changed my stance on this, and I'll tell you why. Okay, so I've got for Monday night football, I got Philadelphia over the Atlanta Falcons. Um, so here's my take on the Bears and the Houston Texans. I originally, when I picked on TikTok, you see it on my TikTok page, and... On my show that I did two weeks ago where I picked my Bears season schedule, who was going to win. Okay, I picked the Texans in the one to win it. I feel, after what I saw on Sunday, out of Caleb Williams and the offense, and it was not, and I talked about this on my show, it was not just Caleb Williams. Yes, he could have played a lot better. I think he could have squeezed 200 yards out of that. Um... That drop pass by Keenan Allen in the end zone didn't help. That would have been 10 more yards. There was a few overthrows that he had and a couple underthrows. I think this is all timing issues that he's having with new receivers. Okay, when you're in college, and if you watch college football, just like I do, the game is not as fast as the NFL. And you could tell when they play. This is why offensive lines can hold a, a defensive line back for 10 seconds at a time sometimes. Because they're slower. They're not as fast. They're not veterans. Okay, which is why rookies come in playing slow. Now, does it happen to every rookie? No. C.J. Stroud had a pretty good season. He had a really good season last year. But he did struggle a little in his first couple of weeks. And people did say that. Um, I'm changing my stance on this one. Not on my TikTok. Not on my show. We're going to keep it like that. Because if 
the Texans do win. Well, then I was right on my prediction there. But my prediction for this week is the Bears are going to win. Caleb Williams, whether Adunze plays, which there is a good chance he may sit a week, maybe two, because that's sprain, and I don't blame the Bears if they do. Okay, that is your number nine pick receiver, okay? That is the guy that you chose in the first round at number nine. Do you want to get him that hurt now and have him out for the whole year of his rookie year or have him sit a game or two and then have him come back healthy? I won't be mad either way, but I would, if I were the coach, I'd hold him back one week, okay, and say, look, Rome, I know you want to play, but we're looking at your long-term play right now, not your short-term. And when I did my show Monday, there was no word yet on anything because of the fact that they didn't get the results back till like Wednesday almost, which was yesterday. Um, there's no official timetable on a return. He's week to week, which is good. Week to week is good. That means they're going to evaluate him every week to see if he's playing or not. Right now he's questionable. He's not out yet. Okay. But I would hold him. Now, if he does play, I would use him as maybe a number four receiver. I'll put Tyler Scott in at number three. So you would have, there's there's rumors that Keenan Allen sat out yesterday's practice, which he's given a heel issue. I would, because he's a veteran, okay? He had a rough game with a new quarterback. It happens. The dude's used to Justin Herbert, okay? Th- this is a trial and error type beginning of the season for the Bears. New receivers, brand spanking new quarterback. This quarterback is like when you buy a toy and pull it right out of the box. Okay, brand new. Honestly, you, you got to look at it that way. Like some of these fans just don't understand. They really don't get it. I have been arguing with people all week about how, oh, Tyson Bajan should be coming in. What are you talking about? Why? Give me, email me and give me one good reason why you would start Tyson Bajan in game two of the season when you have a rookie quarterback who needs to be out there and learn whether he's making a mistake or he's doing good. He needs to learn from all of it. The whole kitten caboodle. He needs to be out there and playing. The whole season. I'm not pulling him out if we're 0 15. I'm making him learn every week. Do you want to know why the Bears don't know how to um, build a quarterback up, a, a rookie? That's the one complaint Bears fans have. And then when they do it, the fair, their Bears fans are already calling for Tyson Bajan. This fan base is the most stupid fan base I have ever seen in my life. No smart football person would ever say that they should pull out Caleb Williams and put in Tyson Bajan in week two of his rookie season. Do you want to know why the Bears don't develop quarterbacks right? Because the fans. The fans are stupid morons. They have no clue what it even means to develop a quarterback. You think because he's number one, the number one pick that he still isn't going to go through learning issues in the in the game? You don't think he's going to make mistakes? That's not how it works. We'll see what happens. But I can guarantee you I'm going to see this weekend a 300-yard game out of Caleb Williams. I think it's going to happen. I think he's going to have... 300 yards and two touchdowns, or two or three touchdowns. He's also going to rush for about 30 yards. It's going to be fun to watch him in, in week two. He said coming off the field, and he reiterated this on Wednesday when he did his press conference, he said there is no way that he is going to play the same way he did last week again. And I believe him. I believe that he saw what he did, and he watched that film back of that game, I can guarantee he felt awful. Things happen. You're a rookie, kid. You're going to make mistakes. You might claim that you don't get nervous. I think everybody gets nervous. 
But we'll see what happens next week. I Hopefully he comes back and he has a great week. Found a couple things that I wanted to share uh, with everybody. Hold on one second. Tyson Bajan in his rookie year didn't get to play a lot. But he did play a few games because of Justin Fields' injury that he had last year. For the Bears last year in his rookie year. In five games. 859 yards. Three touchdowns. Only six, and six interceptions. A QB rating of 71. You weren't calling for Bajan's head. When he was throwing six picks in five games. Caleb didn't throw a pick at all. Even when he was trying to make things happen, he did not force the bad pass that turned the ball over. That's a step forward for a Bears quarterback. This was this was a guy who was a backup and did it. The main guy did it. Jay Cutler did it. Rex Grossman's done it. Kyle Orton did it. Jim Miller did it. Jim McMahon did it. Caleb in his first game where he was probably a little nervous did not throw a big pick or a big fumble. To lose the game. Bears ended up winning that one. Uh, let's go into the last part of the NFL. Let's go into the power rankings. Going into week two. This is where people move up and down. And we see how right they were from week one. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs still at number one. Detroit Lions still at number two. 49ers went um, up one spot. To number three. The Ravens went up a spot to number four. The Eagles went up to number five, one spot. The Buccaneers jumped three spots to number six. The Bills went up one spot to number uh, seven. The Houston Texans went two spots up to number eight. Number nine went up two spots to, for the Dolphins. The Packers dropped seven spots to number 10. The Steelers went up four spots to number 11. The Cowboys went up seven spots to number 12. The Chicago Bears stayed at number 13. Um, the Bengals went down seven spots to number 14. Rams went up two spots to number 15. The Jets dropped two spots to number 16. The Cleveland Browns went down five spots to number 17. The San Diego Chargers stayed the same at 18. The Falcons went down three spots to number 19. Jaguars stayed the same at 20. Seahawks went up one spot to 21. The Colts dropped a spot to number 22. The Saints went up a spot to 23. Vikings went up one spot to 24. The Patriots jumped six spots to number 25. The Arizona Cardinals jumped four spots to number 26. Um, the Broncos dropped four spots to number 27. The Tennessee Titans dropped two spots to 28. Uh, Commanders dropped two spots to 29. The Raiders dropped two spots to number 30. Giants dropped two spots to number 31. And of course, the worst team two weeks in a row was the Carolina Panthers. So there you go. There is the power rankings going into week two. We'll see who jumps a spot or goes down for next week. Um, I think the Bears jump a couple spots up after winning over the Texans. I am calling the Bears to win that game. I'm not calling a score yet because I don't know who's going to score and what they're going to do, um, but I do think they're going to win. All right, let's move on to some NCAA action. All right, so here we go with the top 25 in college. Let's see who's ranking and where. Uh, number 25 is Northern Illinois, and IU is 2-0, and 1-0, and in, I'm not going to go through all that. We're just going to go with their overall. Uh, so 2-0 and right now for Northern Illinois, and number 25. Number 24 is Boston College. They are 2-0 and right now. Uh, let's see, number 23, Nebraska, is at 2-0. and uh, Number 22, Clemson, at 1-1. One and one. Number 21, Iowa State, at 2-0. and Number 20 is Arizona at 2-0. and Number 19 is Louisville. Louisville is 2-0 and also. Uh, number 18 is Notre Dame, 1-1. One one. Number 17 is my Michigan Wolverines. Not excited about that at 1-1. One one. Um, LSU came in at number 16 at 1-1. One one. Um, number 15 is Oklahoma Sooners, 2-0. 
Uh, number 14 is Kansas State at 2-0. 13 is Oklahoma State at 2-0. Utah is 2-0. Um, and number 12, USC is 2-0. Uh, number 11, number 10 is the University of Miami at 2-0. Uh, number 9 is Oregon at 2-0. Okay, so all these last eight teams are 2-0. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> all right. Penn State at number 8. Number 7 is Tennessee. Uh, number six is Missouri. Number five is Ole Miss. Uh, number four is Alabama. Roll Tide. Number three is Ohio State. Uh, number two is Texas. And then, of course, the number one is still the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, so there you have it. Those are your top 25 teams in NCAA right now. Now let's go into, talk about last week, Some let's pick and choose some last week games. To talk about so week two that's week one we don't want that okay so week two everybody saw the big upset well it's not an upset it's upset to me because i'm a michigan fan it's not really an upset though um but number two texas beat the number uh now 17 michigan they were number nine at the time i believe number nine or ten um 31 to 12 that was sad uh oklahoma state number 13 beat arkansas number uh unranked 39 to 31 the ranked 14 kansas state uh 134 27 over tulane the number eight ranked penn state beat bowling green 34 to uh 27 georgia the number one ranked team won 48 to 3 over tennessee tech uh let's see number 25 northern illinois beat number 18 uh notre dame 16 to 14 Number 12 ranked Utah, 123 to uh, 12 over Baylor. Uh, let's see, any other good ones? Number 21, Iowa State, 120 to 19 over Iowa. Um, University of Miami, 156 to 9 over Florida AM. Good Lord. Uh, they're, they're ranked too. I forgot what their ranking was, but it's not showing up on here. Uh, Florida, number. South Florida lost. To number four ranked Alabama, forty-two to sixteen. Wow. Uh, number seven Tennessee, one fifty-one to ten over North Carolina State. Ohio State, one fifty-six to nothing over WMU. Whew, that's a blowout. Um, that's really it. Arizona beat Northern Arizona, twenty-two to ten, and then of course the number eleven USC. Trojans won 11, uh, 48 to nothing over Utah State. Okay, so this weekend for football, Friday night football under the lights on Friday night will be the number 14 Kansas State versus the number 20 Arizona. That'll be a good game, and that's Friday at 7. Saturday is the rest of the games. We've got number 13 ranked Oklahoma State versus Tulsa. I'm only going to say they're ranked. If they're ranked, I'm not going to... Um, say the other teams not because i think by now everybody knows this uh number 17 ranked michigan my wolverines will be facing arkansas state on saturday in michigan that takes place at 11 o'clock uh number four alabama roll tide takes on uh wisconsin uh lsu ranked number 16 faces south carolina the 24th ranked boston college takes on number six ranked missouri um, let's see, Saturday afternoon after 2.30, Ball State takes on the number 10 ranked Miami. Uh, number 9 ranked Oregon takes on Oregon State. Uh, number 15, Oklahoma takes on Tulane. The number 18, Notre Dame Fighting Irish take on Purdue. Number 12, Utah takes on Utah State. Number 5, Old Miss takes on Wake Forest. Uh, let's see, this uh, This is Saturday evening now. Uh, Texas, number ranked, uh, ranked number two, takes on UTSA. Uh, Northern Iowa against Nebraska. Number one, Georgia, takes on Kentucky. And Saturday night, Kent State uh, takes on the number seven ranked Tennessee. So that is all your games for this Saturday. Hopefully I mentioned your team. There's probably a few that might have been left off this list, but you get the drift. Um, like I said, I don't predict college like I do the NFL 
It's just like I just go over it with you. Um, but yeah, I'm not proud of Michigan right now. Not a good showing against Texas. You know, you would think knowing that it's a ranked team that you would go out there and play tough, and they just didn't. Um, so yeah, I was really um, not happy with that. It was not a good showing at all against a good ranked team. You would think that the defending national champion Michigan Wolverines would want to play stronger. Now they have to come out this weekend and they need to crush a non-ranked team. Like they better win like 51 to 0 in that game. Like don't give up anything. Just go out there like dogs and just beat them. Um, but yeah, so we'll see what that, we'll see what happens. I'll let everybody know next week. Moving on to some WWE, let's talk about uh, Bad Blood, which takes place October 5th. That's right, it is on my birthday. I'm excited. Bad Blood is going to return October 5th, 2024, which is a very significant date. And it has to do with the fact that WWE has dusted off the premium live event for the first time in 20 years. The first ever Bad Blood was October 5th, 1997. That's right. That was a Sunday. And I saw the first Bad Blood with my friends on my birthday at home. We ordered the pay-per-view. It was fun. That was a Hell in a Cell match. The first ever Hell in a Cell match between The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels was a great matchup, awesome, um, and I'm excited for this. They did change the time on it um, because UFC is later that night, so they changed the time, and it's going to be kicking off at 5 p.m. Central Time, so 6 p.m. Eastern instead of 7. They originally had it marked for 7, now it's going at 6, which is 5 my time. Um, so yeah, make sure you watch that. Right now, match-wise, it's going to be on Peacock. In Canada, you can watch it on Sportnet Plus, and on United Kingdom, still the WWE Network. Um, it's going to be taking place from the State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, where they can hold 21,000 fans, and there are still some tickets available through Ticketmaster. So far, the hottest feud of 2024 is one of the only matches on the Bad Blood card right now. CM Punk will face off against Drew McIntyre one more time. In a Hell in a Cell match. Why not. After bringing back an event. 20 years later. On the date. That the first one was ever. 27 years ago. That's right. 97 was 27 years ago. Shawn Michaels the Undertaker. Made history. When they were the first two men to ever step into the Hell in a Cell. Now everybody remembers Foley and Undertaker. For the Hell in a Cell match. But not a lot of people remember. And I may go back and watch this match today. When I get done with this. CM Punk and Drew McIntyre though. Are going to bring the house down. It's going to be brutal. And it's going to bring down the curtain. This most likely will be the main event. Even if there is title matches. This will be the main event. Just because of the history of the two of them. The fact that both of them have taken a match. Drew McIntyre, of course, took the first match at SummerSlam. CM Punk won last month at the pay-per-view. Um, he beat Drew McIntyre in a bull roll match. So now here we go. This is going to be fun. Uh, Liv Morgan is going to be taking on Rhea Ripley for the Women's uh, World title. We knew this was coming. Bash in Berlin, we saw her face off with a tag team match. They needed this match. And I think Rhea Ripley wins, but I'm not gonna go over. Um, I'm not gonna go over the whole thing right now. Um, and then Damian Priest and Finn Balor. That's definitely gonna happen. You know it's gonna happen. We all know it's gonna happen um, because Finn Balor is responsible partially for Damian Priest losing at SummerSlam. So we've got that. Um, these are the only matches right now that it's showing. So. Obviously, we're going to see more matches added to the card. Um, probably a title defense out of Cody. I'm sure he's going to defend his title. Um, Gunther maybe, but, you know, they may give the world title a rest for a, an event. They don't need to do it at every pay-per-view. Um, he's done two good matches. He did his SummerSlam match and he won it. Then Bash of Berlin, he had the good match. So not really a reason to just go out there and necessarily defend it every month. They will have a world title match, I'm sure, 
out of something. So you're either going to see Cody or Gunther, one of the two. Um, but I think we are aiming at Cody and, and uh, maybe a Jacob Fatu or Solo. So they're aiming for that. We'll see what happens. Don't forget, too, this Friday night, uh, SmackDown moves to the USA Network. So if you turn on Fox at 7 o'clock, uh, you're not going to see it. It's not on there no more. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to see what happens. But, all right, that's it. So, Bad Blood, we're going to see what happens. Uh, we definitely are going to have CM Punk and Drew. Uh, looks like we're having Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley for the women's title. And Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. So, that's going to be a really good event so far. I'm excited for it. Like I said, it's on my birthday. How could you not be? How could you not be excited to watch on your birthday? That's really cool. All right, so let's move on now to and that's it for sports oh one last thing i wanted to go over really quick before i did that one last sports thing i wanted to go over this the top 10 athletes of all time according to chat gpt okay so here's the top 10 list and let me know if you agree with this i'm also going to do a TikTok on my sports page uh either later or tomorrow about this and we'll see how many people agree or disagree number 10 uh number 10 is Lionel Messi, the soccer player. Number nine, baseball player Babe Ruth. Number eight, um, I believe this is, I don't know, it's the flag with the plus sign in the middle of it. I, I don't honestly know which flag, but it's Roger Federer. Um, I believe he's a tennis player. Uh, number seven, Michael Phelps, the swimmer. Number six, Jackie Robinson, baseball player, amazing. First black man to ever play. Uh, to leave the Negro League and play in Major League Baseball. Uh, they have a day for them every year where everybody wears the number 42. If you haven't seen the, the movie 42 about his life, it was played by uh, Chadwick Boseman, the actor from Black Panther who passed away. He was in that. Really good. He played an amazing Jackie Robinson. Number five, Pele, uh, the soccer player. Number four, Muhammad Ali. Everybody knows a boxer. Uh, number three is Usain Bolt, uh, the runner. Number two, Serena Williams, the tennis player. And number one, GOAT of all time, Michael Jordan. Yes, from the Chicago Bulls. I noticed LeBron didn't make this list. Gee, I wonder why. But let me know. Email me at my email address. It's going to be in the show notes. Um, and let me know what you think. Uh, who should have made this list? Who shouldn't have made this list? You know, is the list right or not? Let me know what's going on. All right, let's move on to entertainment. All right, so here we go, entertainment section of the show. We've got, of course, the premiere dates um, for all shows coming up from starting tonight, September 12th, all the way through, I believe it's probably October. Um, so here we go. Uh, tonight, starting on Netflix, Emily in Paris Part 2, uh, season premiere of The Old Man on FX, and series premiere of The Tailor of Sin City on AMC+. Plus. Tomorrow, uh, three women premiere on a uh, series premiere, so brand new show on Stars. September 15th, uh, the season premiere of Tulsa Kings on Paramount+. Plus. September 17th will be the premiere of Dancing with the Stars on ABC, uh, the series premiere of High Potential on ABC, and the series premiere of American Sports Story, Aaron Hernandez on FX. Uh, September 18th, the series premiere of The Golden Bachelorette, uh, that's on ABC, the season premiere of Survivor, and the series premiere of Agatha All Along on Disney+. Plus. September 19th, season premiere of Frasier on Paramount+. Plus. That's season two. Uh, the series premiere of The Penguin on HBO. The season premiere of Jersey Shore Family Vacation. This is next Thursday, or Jersey for them. And the series premiere of Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez story on Netflix. Uh, September 20th, uh, the series premiere of La Maison on Apple TV+. Plus. September 22nd, the season premiere of From, um, it's on MGM+, Plus. the series premiere of Matlock on CBS, and the series premiere of Rescue High Surf on Fox. Uh, let's see, September 23rd, the season premiere of The Voice on NBC, 
series premiere of Brilliant Minds on NBC, and the season premiere of 911 Lone Star on Fox. Uh, September 24th, the season premiere of America's Got Talent on NBC, and the series premiere of Penelope on Netflix. September 25th, the season premiere of One Chicago, uh, Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, and Chicago PD, all on NBC. Uh, and then the series premiere of Grotesque on FX, and the series, uh, season premiere of The Masked Singer on Fox. September 26th is the season premiere of 911 on ABC, uh, the series premiere of Dr. Odyssey on ABC, and the season premiere of Grey's Anatomy. What season are they on already? Uh, let's see. I don't even know what season they're on. Well, it's like some in the 20s already. My God, that show's been on forever. Also, the season premiere of Colin from All Accounts on Paramount Plus and the series premiere of Nobody Wants This on Netflix. Uh, September 27th, series premiere of Social Studies on FX. September 29th, the season premiere of The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, The Book of Carol on AMC. Uh, October 1st, we got the season premiere of The Irrational on NBC. October 2nd, the C, uh, season premiere of Sullivan's Crossing on The CW. Uh, the series premiere of, of Joan on The CW. And the series premiere of Where's Wanda on Apple TV+. Plus. October 3rd, season premiere of The Legend of Vox Machina on Prime Video. And then, of course, the season premieres of... The Law and Orders, which is Law and Order, and then Law and Order SVU, and then the season premiere of Found on NBC. Uh, that comes right after SVU. Um, and then Heartstopper on Netflix. And then October 7th, the season premiere of Superman and Lois on the CW. October 8th, we'll have the season premiere of The Irrational on NBC. Uh, then the season premiere October 9th of Abbott Elementary, uh, Scamanda is right after that on ABC. And then, of course, the series premiere of La Manaquina on Hulu. Uh, October 10th is a series premiere of Tomb Raider, The Legend of Laura Croft on Netflix. Uh, let's see, the C uh, series premiere of Citadel, Diana on Prime Video. And the season premiere of Outer Banks Part 1 on Netflix. October 11th, we got the series premiere of Disclaimer on Apple TV+. Plus. October 13th, the season premiere of Tracker on CBS. October 14th is the season premieres of the series premiere of NCIS Origins, and then the season premiere of NCIS, both on CBS. Um, and then October 15th is the series premiere of FBI International on CBS. October 16th is the season premiere of Shrinking on Apple TV+. Plus. October 17th, you got the season premiere of Superman Lois on CW, the season premiere of Elsbeth on CBS, series premiere of The Prodeeps of Pittsburgh on Prime Video, the series premiere of George and Mandy's First Marriage on CBS, and the season premiere of Ghosts on CBS. Uh, let's see, October 18th, you have the series premiere of Happy Place. That's the one with Reba, uh, where she owns a bar. Uh, let's see, season premiere of Lopez vs. Lopez. Uh, season premiere of Blue Bloods on CBS. Oh, the other two are on NBC, the Lopez and Lopez one also. Um, and then we got Rivals, a series premiere of that on Hulu. Season premiere of Fire Country on CBS. And The Devil's Hour, season premiere on Prime Video. October 21st, you got the season premiere of What We Would Do in the Shadows on FX and Papa's House on CBS. Um, and then October 25th, the series premiere of Before. That's going to be on Apple TV+. Plus. We've got the season premiere on October 27th on HBO of Somebody Somewhere. And then Disney Plus has a series premiere on October 30th of The Wizards Beyond Waverly Place. October 31st is season premiere of The Diplomat on Netflix. And then November 7th, you got a season, a series premiere on Peacock of The Day of the Jackal. And Netflix has a season premiere of Outer Banks Part 2. November 10th, you got Yellowstone season premiere on Paramount. 
Then you've got the series premiere on November 12th of St. Dennis Medical on NBC. November 13th, you also got the season premiere of Children Ruin Everything on the CW. And the season premiere of Sprint on Netflix. Um, November 14th, we've got Cross, the series premiere of that on Prime Video. And another series premiere of Say Nothing on, on FX and Hulu. Cobra Kai comes back for its next part of its season on November 15th on Netflix. And then we also got Silo on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, let's see, Night Court comes back November 19th um, to NBC. Uh, Peacock has a season premiere of Based on a True Story. That sounds good on November 21st. And then we go to December and we've got Star Wars The Skeleton Crew on Disney+. Plus. That's a series premiere. That'll be decent. Uh, looks like that's it. What is this? January. This must be old. Oh, I'm looking. Hang on. Just making sure. I'm looking back in January. Is this? It says January archived. So that could be from last year. Oh, I bet this was last year's. Okay. Yeah. Because, hold on one second. Yep. This is because Law and Order Organized Crime was is not on this year. It's coming in second part of the season, but it's going to be on Peacock. So they haven't even announced the date for that yet. All right, so there we go. There is your TV schedule for this year. Hopefully you can rewind this and listen again and write down your favorite shows and when they premiere, or you could just go to any website that has the list. But I know people like hearing it on here. So let's move on to the next part of our entertainment uh, section of the show. So last night I was off work, which is very rare on a Wednesday night, um, but we had something at my son's school and I decided to play hooky for the night. So I didn't go into work last night, so I actually got to watch part of the VMAs um, last night, which I haven't seen the VMAs in years because um, the last few years I've been working on Wednesdays when they're usually on, or Sundays when they're on, um, the day changes, but usually they're on while I'm at work. I'm only off Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and you never get anything good like that on those days. Um, so last night I actually got to see some of it. Um, Eminem kicked off the show performing Abracadabra and his uh, song with Jelly Roll, Someone Save Me. Those are good. Um... And then from there, I mean, the show is hosted by Megan Thee Stallion. She did pretty good. She did a good job on it. And uh, here was the list of all the winners. So let's go over for the people who haven't seen it yet. This is a spoiler. If you don't care to see it and you just want to know who won, here we go. I'll do it for you. Uh, so video of the year, the winner was Taylor Swift featuring Post Malone for Fortnite. Uh, Artist of the year went to Taylor Swift also. Song of the year... Went to Sabrina Carpenter. Now, for those who don't remember Sabrina Carpenter and don't know her as a singer, you will probably remember her if you've ever watched the show Girl Meets World on Disney. Um, she was the friend of Riley. Her name was Maya. And yeah, she was the friend of hers. And after that show ended, she got more into singing, and now she's a singer, and she won an MTV Video Music Award for her song, Expresso. Uh, Best New Artist went to Chappelle Rowan. Uh, best collaboration went to Taylor Swift and Post Malone for Fortnite. Uh, be, uh, winner of best pop went to Taylor Swift. Man, Taylor just crushed it. Uh, best hip hop went to Eminem for Houdini. Nice. I didn't even see that part. I fell asleep watching the replay. I was really tired yesterday um, from work the night before, and so I fell asleep watching it. So I'll have to watch some of it. Um, the winner of best R and B went to SZA. For snooze. Uh, best alternative winner was Benson Boone. Beautiful things. Beat out some good ones too. Linkin Park, Imagine Dragons, Jose, not bad. Um, and best rock went to Lenny Kravitz for Human. And Lenny Kravitz performed. I got to see that. That was pretty good. Um, he beat out U2, Kings of Leon, Green Day, Coldplay, and Bon Jovi. That whole category. Except for maybe... Oh, yeah, Kings of Leon are older, too. That whole category are rock groups and sing uh, and singers that I grew up watching. I mean, you have Bon Jovi, Coldplay. I, I listen to Green Day, Kings of Leon, and U2. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Best Latin went to Anita. 
I'm not going to say the name of her song because I'll probably ruin it. Uh, Best Afro Beats went to Tyla for Water. Best K-Pop went to Lisa for Rockstar. Uh, Video for Good went to Billie Eilish. What Was I Made For? Uh, From the Barbie soundtrack. Uh, MTV Push Performance of the Year went to... I don't even know what this is. It's just like different months. So according to this, for August 2023, it was Khalil. September 2023 went to Glorilla. October 23 went to Benson Boone. November 23 went to Coco Jones. Um, December 23 went to Victoria Monet. Uh, January 24 went to Jesse Murph. Uh, February of 24 went to Teddy Swims. Chappelle Rowan got March of 2024. Flaina Boss uh, got April. May went to LaFay. June went to Lee Serifum. And July went to The Warning. Don't even know what that is, but whatever it was, um, that was pretty funny. Um, and VA, the VMA's most iconic, iconic performance. Here was the list of nominees for that. Beyonce, Love on Top. Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Madonna, Missy Elliott for Like a Virgin in Hollywood. Eminem, The Real Slim Shady and The Way I Am. Katy Perry, Roar. Lady Gaga, Paparazzi. Madonna, Like a Virgin. And Taylor Swift, You Belong to Me. The winner of that for the VMA's Most Iconic Performance went to Katy Perry, Roar. And she actually, I believe, performed it yesterday, too. Uh, Let's see. Best Trending Video went to Megan Thee Stallion. Featuring Yuki Chiba with Mamushi. Best group. Who won it? Okay, why is this not gone? Oh, that's weird. They never said it. So hold on. Let me try to find out. Okay, so according to this, the best group went to the group 17. They won that one. Uh, for some reason, Billboard's um, release of this did not have that. Um, so let's see, best group, yeah, that didn't, that didn't go. Uh, so yes, the group seventeen won it. Uh, the song of summer. There's a lot of songs on this list, but the winner was Taylor Swift and Post Malone for Fortnite. Um, best direction went to Taylor Swift and Post Malone for Fortnite, uh, directed by Taylor Swift. Uh, best cinematography was Ariana Grande, We Can't Be Friends. Best editing went to Taylor Swift and Post Malone for Fortnite. The editing by Chancellor Hayes. Uh, best choreography was Dua Lipa with Houdini. So yeah, she did a song called Houdini also. Uh, best visual effects was Eminem with Houdini. You can't beat that when you've got Eminem's current self rapping against his former self. I mean, that was amazing. That video was awesome. Um, best art direction went to Megan the Stallion for BOA. And that looks like that's it. Yep, that is it. So that was the list of the VMA winners from last night. It was a pretty decent show all in all from what I saw. Um, I didn't see the whole thing. Uh, of course, I did get have to, I missed Eminem winning his award, but I did catch the beginning where he opened up the show uh, performing Abracadabra. Um, so that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, it was good. So let's move on now really quick to the CMA Awards. CMA Awards announced their um, full list of nominees for the show. For a minute when it was popping up, I thought it said Taylor Swift. I'm like, she's not country anymore. Not that I know of, but we'll see. Maybe one day she'll go back to a country album. She was good at country. Beyonce, I feel, she. I heard she got snubbed in these awards too because her album did really well and uh, nothing. So we'll see what happens there. All right, let's see. Let's go over this list of nominees. All right, so the 58th Annual Country Music Association Awards uh, nominees were announced on Monday. 
uh, with one artist leading the nominees and one notable absence. Morgan Wallen gathered the most nods with seven, followed by Cody Johnson and Chris Stapleton with five nominations, and Post Malone and Lady Wilson with each four. Uh, let's see. And then, of course, we had Lewis Bell, Luke Combs, Charlie Handsome, Hoskins, Jelly Roll, Megan Morani, Casey Musgraves all secured three nominations. But missing from the list is Beyonce, who made history by becoming the first black woman to come in at number one on the Top Country Albums chart. And she did not get it. But here we go. 50th annual CMA Awards will air on November 20th on ABC and the next day on Hulu. Here's the full list for Entertainer of the Year. Uh, Luke Combs, Jelly Roll, Chris Stapleton, Morgan Wallen, and Lainey Wilson. Single of the Year. Award goes to the Artist, Producer, and Mix Engineers. A Bar Song, Tipsy, by Shabuzi. Dirt Cheap by Cody Johnson. I Had Some Help by Post Malone featuring Morgan Wallen. Watermelon Moonshine by Lainey Wilson. And White Horse by Chris Stapleton. Album of the Year, Deeper Well by Casey Musgraves. Fathers and Sons, Luke Combs. Higher by Chris Stapleton. Leather by Cody Johnson. And Whitsit Chapel by Jelly Roll. Song of the Year, Burn It Down. Um, I'm not going to go over all the songwriters because there's like a lot of everybody, so I'll just say the song. Uh, Burn It Down. Uh, Dirt Cheap, I Had Some Help, The Painter, and White Horse are up for Song of the Year. Uh, let's see. And then we've got the Female Vocalist of the Year, Kelsey Bellarini, the Almost Birthday Girl, Ashley McBride, Megan Marooney, Casey Musgraves, and Lainey Wilson. Male vocalist, vocalist of the Year, Luke Combs, Jelly Roll, Cody Johnson, Chris Stapleton, and Morgan Wallen. Vocal Group of the Year, Lady A, Little Big Town, Old Dominion, The Red Clay Strays, and The Zach Brown Band. Vocal Duo of the Year, Brooks and Dunn, Brothers Osborne, Dan and Shay, Maddie and Tay, and The War and Treaty. Musical Event of the Year. Cowboys Cry 2, uh, Kelsey Bellarini, I Need Some Help, Post Malone featuring Morgan Wallen, I Remember Everything, Zach Bryan featuring Casey Musgraves, Man Made a Bar by Morgan Wallen featuring Eric Church, and You Look Like You Love Me by Ella Langley featuring Riley Green. Musician of the Year for guitar, Tom Bukovic, uh, Jeannie Fleener on fiddle, uh, Paul Franklin, Steel Guitar, Rob McNeely, Guitar, and Charlie Warsome on Guitar. Uh, music Video of the Year, Dirt Cheap by Cody Johnson. I Had Some Help by Post Malone and Morgan Wallen. I'm Not Pretty by Megan Marooney. Uh, let's see, The Painter by Cody Johnson. And Wildflowers and Wild Horses by Lainey Wilson. New Artist of the Year, Megan Moraney, Shabuzi, Nate Smith, Mitchell Tapini, Zach Top, and Bailey Zimmerman. Uh, the 2024 CMA Broadcast Awards. Finalists for Broadcast Personality of the Year by Market Size. American Country Countdown by Kix Brooks. Uh, let's see. Country Goal with Terry Clark. That's Terry Clark. Uh, Crook and Chase Countdown. Lorraine Cook and Charlie Chase. Highway Hot 30 with Buzz Bernard. Uh, uh, that's Buzz Bernard and Honky Tonkin with Tracy Lawrence, Tracy Lawrence and Patrick Thomas. Uh, Daily National, The Bobby Bone Show, uh, Michael J on Air on iHeart Media, Nights with Elena. Uh, let's see, Pickle Jar Up All Night with Patrick Thomas, and The Steve Harmon Show by Steve Harmon. Uh, Major Market. Wow, I'm proud of this one. Major Market, The Andy Summers Show. Uh, Andy Summers, and then Chris Carr and Company out of Minneapolis. Oh, the first one was Philadelphia. Uh, Frito and Katie, 
out of San Antonio, Texas. The Morning Wolf Pack with Matt McAllister in Seattle, Washington. And the Most Fun Afternoons with Scotty K from Chicago, Illinois. Heck yeah, that is awesome. He is awesome. I love Scotty K. I follow him on uh, Facebook. He's awesome. Uh, let's see. And then for Large Market, there's Dale Carter Morning Show uh, out of Kansas City, Missouri. Heather Froglier out of Riverside, San, ben San Bernardino, California. Jesse and Anna out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Mike and Amanda out of Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And on air with Anthony out of Riverside, San Bernardino, California. Uh, medium markets. We've got Brent, My Brent Michaels, not Brent Michaels, out of Bakersfield, California. Joey and Nancy out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, New Country Mornings with Nancy and Woody <laughs> out of Dayton, Ohio. Scott and Sarah in the mornings in Akron, Ohio. And Steve and Gina in the morning out of Omaha, Council Bluff, Nebraska, Iowa. And then we've got the small markets. Dan Austin Show in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Dave and Jen out of Huntington, Ashland, West Virginia. The Eddie Fox Show out of Asheville, North Carolina. Hilly and Hart uh, out of Katy, Columbia, Missouri. And then Officer Don and Deanne out of Lexington, Fayette, Kentucky. And then we've got the 2024 CMA Broadcast Awards, finalists for Radio Station of the Year by Market Size, Major Market, San Antonio, Texas, KCYY, KKBQ out of Houston, Texas, KYGO out of Denver, Colorado, WXTU out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and WYCD out of Detroit, Michigan. For Large Market, they've got WRIK, West Palm Beach, Baton Rouge, Raton, Florida, WMIL, Milwaukee Racine. Uh, let's see, WQDR out of Raleigh, Dura, North Carolina. WSIX out of Nashville, Tennessee. WWKA out of Orlando, Florida. Medium market, you got KXKT out of Omaha, Council Bluff, uh, Nebraska, Iowa. WBEE out of Rochester, New York. WIVK out of Knoxville, Tennessee. WLFP, Memphis, Tennessee, and then WUSY out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, small market, WCOW, La Crosse, Wisconsin, WKML out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, WKXC out of Augusta, Georgia, WXFL out of Florence, Muscle, Shoals, Alabama, and then WYCT out of Pensacola, Florida. So those are all the awards um, for the CMAs this year. Hopefully the Chicago man, Scotty K, wins. I'm so excited for him. Congratulations, Scotty K, on becoming nominated. I hope that when I do that show on the week, the Thursday after that, I hope I'm calling your name out as the winner. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, last thing I want to go over before we talk about the box office really quick is, of course, uh, this week we lost an amazing, amazing actor. Earl Jones passed away at the age of 93. Uh, he was born January 17th, 1931, and then died September 9th, 2024. He was born in Arcabula, Mississippi. Uh, became an actor and was in some iconic roles. And I'm going to go over these roles really quick with you. These are ones that he was in. Um, as late as last uh, two years ago, he was still doing voiceovers. He did a four-episode voiceover of Darth Vader on Obi-Wan Kenobi, a TV miniseries. He has been in movies like Coming to America 1 and 2. He played Darth Vader in the voice of Darth Vader in the Star Wars movies. He played Mufasa in The Lion King. Um, he's also been in other movies and TV shows, The Big Bang Theory. Um, let's see... He's been in According to Jim, the TV show House he played in an episode, Two and a Half Men he played in an episode. He was in Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. He was uncredited as a narrator in the movie Click. He was in Scary Movie 4, The Benchwarmers. He played the voice of Darth Vader, of course. 
Uh, he was in The Sandlot 2. He was in... We're getting into all the good movies that people would know. And he's been in a lot. A lot of stuff. Uh, let's see. Three episodes of The Simpsons. He was in... An episode of Frasier. Let's see what else he's been in. Third Rock from the Sun. Clear and Present Danger with Harrison Ford. He played Admiral Greer. Everybody knows he was in Lion King. He was Mufasa. Naked Gun 33 and a third. He was uncredited for that one. Uh, he's been in a couple episodes of Law and Order. He was in a movie with Tupac Shakur um, called Gang Related where he played an attorney. That was a good movie. Makes me want to watch that one again. He was in Patriot Games with Harrison Ford. Uh, let's see. The Hunt for Red October. Played Adam, Admiral Greer in that one, too. Uh, he was in Three Fugitives, Field of Dreams. Uh, these are all the good movies. I said both coming to America's. So he's been in a ton of movies. Great actor. One of my favorites. Rest in peace to James Earl Jones at the age of 93. Uh, let's go into the box office. We'll kick the show Finally off at the end with our box office. Where did Beetlejuice come in? Let's find out. All right. So. Let's see. Number 10 in its first week of release with Brandy. The front room did 1.7 million in the theaters. Same total gross in the first weekend out. Uh, number 9, Despicable Me. Uh, four came in at the number nine spot with a weekend gross of 1.8 million, still at 358 million in 10 weeks. Um, the Channing Tatum movie Blink Twice came in number eight with 2.1 million dollars, a total gross of 21 million in three weeks. Number seven, the movie Twisters, did 2.2 million at the box office last weekend, 265 million dollar gross in eight weeks. Number six, The Forge. Did a weekend gross of $3 million, $22 million total in three weeks. Uh, Blake Lively's movie, It Ends With Us, at number five. A weekend gross of $3.7 million, $142 million total gross in five weeks. Coming in at number four, still hanging in there, Alien Romulus. In its fourth week, did $3.9 million at the box office. It has made a total of $98 million. Uh, number three is the movie Reagan with a weekend gross of $4.8 million, total gross of $19 million in two weeks. Number two, here it is, Deadpool and Wolverine still brought in $7 million last weekend. $615 million and it's been out for seven weeks already. And of course, the number one movie at the box office last weekend, not a shocker, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the long-awaited sequel with Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, and Catherine O'Hara with newcomer, um, oh, why is it, Jenna Ortega, it slipped my mind for a second, and directed by Tim Burton, came in at number one with $111 million in its opening weekend with a total gross of $126 million. Now, people ask me, what is the total gross compared to the weekend gross? Why is it higher? Because I believe, now I might be wrong on this, and if I'm wrong, email me, but I believe that the total gross is also anything it's done the rest of the week. So um, that was the weekend release, but it's been, it's today's Thursday. So that is a total gross of what it's made probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and maybe probably up till yesterday. So it made $100 million in the box office that weekend, but it made another $14 million, $15 million in this during the week, you know, the days leading up to today. So that's why it's a different total gross after the first week. Now, you're not going to know that after the first week because at, once you get into the second weekend, now it's just a total gross of everything. So, yeah, I mean, you just look at it that way, but that's how I look at it. Um, that is $111 million just in the three days from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The rest of the 26th is from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 
which makes sense because people still go to the movies during the week after work, after school, whatever, you know, weekends they go, but people go during the week too. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. That is it for the show next week. Uh, we've got another big week. We'll find out where Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice fell. Um, did it stay at number one or did Deadpool and Wolverine take over their number one spot again? Out of seven weeks, Deadpool and Wolverine was number one, five of them. That's amazing. Uh, that's a good run so far for it. And it's still going to be out another few weeks, I'm sure, in the theater. As long as they're making money, they're going to keep it going. Uh, but I can't wait to watch it. I'll probably rent it uh, once it comes streaming which should be soon. Uh, next week, we're going to go over uh, week two of the NFL, week uh, three of the NCAA football. Uh, we will also talk a little Blackhawks and Bulls because the preseason should be starting in training camps in the next couple of weeks. So uh, we are ready for some hockey. Uh, we'll also talk a little baseball, which I haven't done in a while, but we're going to talk a little baseball next week um, because there's only a couple weeks left. Let's start talking playoffs. Let's talk where everybody is, wild card spots, people in the hunt for the wild card, how bad the White Sox are playing right now. We'll talk about all that next week too. So make sure you come on back and then don't forget every single Monday I do my Chicago Bears day after show where I'll talk about the game where we were, what it looked like. It's a post-game show, but the day after, basically. So make sure you join me for that. I'll let everybody know in the show notes. It should be everywhere that I post this show. It should be just like in there with it. So it'll just say a different name on the show. But it should be just where everything else is because I did put it to iHeartRadio and to uh, Spotify. But if you listen here... It should be posted here too. Um, it'll be under two different shows. So I have this one and then I have that one. You'll see it all on there. But I'll see everybody next week. Enjoy the last few weekends of summer because spring or fall actually starts next weekend. So this is the last official weekend of the summer. So enjoy it. Get out there. Go do some stuff. Go see a good movie. Watch some football. Get ready to get your hoodies and your jeans out if you haven't already. Do a couple more summer bonfires and, and barbecues. And I will see everybody next week. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and I love you all very much. See you later. Peace.